Hello, thanks for tuning in. This has been a really an incredibly difficult video to try and get a grip on because <sighs> for some reason I I have a, I'm having a hard time trying to um, <clears throat> integrate the idea that there there's two audiences for this this material. On the one hand, you have the people who are experienced with uh, stereo equipment and how that would be connected to itself to order to be just a stereo, not let alone trying to connect something to something to hook it up to your computer. Um, when I when we got this this interface. The, the Tascam UH-7000, that beast down there. Um, I would talk about the, the I.O. and the one of the connectors in the back for the line outs for the, to hook the speakers up, um, were these XLR connectors. Now, XLR connectors can have a three, four, five, six, seven, seven prongs, depending on what it is they do and the company that makes them. So, um, and the other, point is that the, the, these kinds of connectors are either in very high-end consumer stereo equipment or they're for pro audio. So in the general run of consumer audio equipment, you would never see these things. So, so they're a little disconcerting when you're, when you're looking to try and add an outboard audio interface to your computer. Um, it's a little disconcerting, a little, a little well, it makes you question, you know, am I on the right track when I'm looking at this sort of equipment for my use? And of course, being somebody who wants to do creative work for YouTube or podcasting and who may want a second individual there to, uh, to contribute, to uh, be a part of whatever production is, um, it becomes very problematical to put to use USB microphones. Um, so the, the way a US, USB microphone does, it has the digital to audio converter in the microphone. So it's just a digital signal that gets passed to the computer. And a computer, uh, normally you set up one primary microphone, unless you use uh, routing software. And then of course the complexity starts to uh, multiply. <laughs> So in some respects, it's easier to actually get an outboard audio interface, outboard or an external sound card, as it's sometimes known. And then that would have inputs for some XLR microphones, which are essentially just audio, I mean, analog devices. And the sound card itself does the digital to audio conversion, which then transmits it to your computer. And then in your computer, you can manipulate it there and it transmits back out. So that's it in a nutshell. But getting back to this, it, it, for 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 somebody who's just an average Joe, it's 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 quite I don't know a bit of a challenge to, to try and get everything working together. And and I you know I I mulled this over and I mean it's, to me it was seemed like pretty straightforward. But I got all this stuff together and it's it it actually is kind of mind numbing, flabbergasting what it is that you have to do. So you've got this the XLR connector, which connects to the line outs of the, the Tascam. And then on this end, you have the, you have the, the RCA male, and then the other adapter, which is the RCA female. And RCA, incidentally, it means Radio Corporation of America, which I had to look up because from even through use, you forget what it means. RCA, the Radio Corporation of America, was 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 came to prominence for making uh, consumer radios back in the twenties and thirties, uh, and they developed this connector because uh, p uh, record players, phonographs became commercially available, and at that time people didn't have uh, integrated uh, uh, stereos to hook these things up with, but. RCA, Radio Corporation of America, had the radio, so they developed this, this connector so people could hook up um, a, a record player to it, and that would, in effect, act as a stereo. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so I have the RCA connector, and then that terminates in a three and a half millimeter 
which now is commonly known as a as a headphone a plug, and it's a, a three point five millimeter TRS connector. TRS I think is tip, uh, ring, and sleeve. Uh, <laughs> which I had to look up too, and I probably got wrong because I, 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 I flustered uh, so much. And then, because I, uh, when I hooked up the stereo initially, that's a Sony integrated uh, TAF3A, and I hooked that up initially to the to the stereo uh, to the computer before getting the sound interface. And I used the RCA like the, a cable like this, except longer. So it hooked up to well, it had the male plugs on this end, and I hooked that into. Uh, the back there, the right and left, and then ter terminated in a in a three and a half millimeter uh, uh, phono plug or or telephone headphone jack here. So um, I had to get a coupler, which is a three and a half millimeter uh, dual female uh, uh, connector. So I can connect that on this end, and then the other plug, which is runs up to there, and then now I have I can use this. To play the system sounds out of the outboard uh, amplifier, uh, integrated amplifier I'm using as the <laughs> for for my speaker system. Oh, and those are those are Axiom Audio M22s, which are which are lovely speakers, by the way. So uh, yeah, so I'm just going to connect this back up. Um, and uh, I had this I had the the system shut off just a little while ago because I found last night when I was editing <laughs> the first version of this this uh, this video, which turned out completely i uh, i mean beyond terrible there's some sometimes there's there's terrible and then there's like beyond terrible but anyway this was beyond terrible but what i was finding was that when it was rendering it kept uh it kept changing um um sample rates on me for um i could for reasons i couldn't really quite understand now when you're doing rendering there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh uh, well, there's a lot of stress on the processor. I mean, this is a pretty hefty processor. I'm using a 6800K uh, boosted to a 4.2 <laughs> gigahertz. So, you know, it's not like you can't do it. <clears throat> but what I, occurred to me was I did a tiny little bit of research. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so <clears throat> anyway, get back again. So, yeah, so what I th think maybe might have happened was that... Uh, um, that I have the UPS hooked up to that that same UP, USB bus, so the USB the UPS makes a lot of calls on the USB bus, which interferes and conflicts with the calls that the Tascam is making. So, and then all you know, it just it just messed right up. So I think that's maybe the issue. <clears throat> But we shall see later on. Uh, I just wanted to give a brief little show. See, um, so let's see now. Yeah. Whew. So when I turned that on, this this populated. This was just blank a second ago. I should have should have maybe stopped and mentioned that. But the what's what's listed here, uh, forty eight. Uh, K times four, which is 192, and that's the sample rate, the, the bits. And I have it set up for low latency, and now it's running through the USB 3 port. Even though the the outboard, the, the Tascam was a USB 2 um, de device, or it has a USB 2 interface, and I'm thinking the USB 3 might have might have some better latency. Oh, so all of that. So the, one of the interesting thing things that um, is that uh, um, here in the interface? There's no spot here to change the 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 uh, the sample rate or the bit rate. So in order to do that, you have to actually go to the. I, don't, I think it's just a Windows thing. It's really really quite strange. So you go back to playback devices, hit the default, and then properties, advanced, and now you can change the the uh, sample rate and bit depth here so it sounds good <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah and that was actually that's that's the one thing I haven't really mentioned yet is that it does sound really nice it sounds really nice um, 
Okay, so let's see that. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, the mixer. And I just wanted to show this briefly. Gentlemen, I'm really pleased that you've decided to check out my channel. And you can see the... Check out my videos and check out the fish. They're such beautiful little creatures. And it breaks my heart for never if we lose one of them. And we've lost <coughs> many, many, many of them over the years. Which... So you can see that the... Uh, that the, the meters are running. And this was one other little thing that I just wanted to point out was that the, that the, uh, uh, this is in, in stereo mode, stereo mix. And in stereo mix, this is one of the sort of the cool thing about this device is that you can use this to um, basically just for live streaming. So you use the stereo mix, you can add a, a, an effect or two depending on, on the, uh, the uh, sample rate at 192, you can't use anything because it's it, it, it's it's basically at that point you're just using it for playback. Um, but anyway, for for streaming or that, you can add an effect or two. Excuse me, depending on what the, the sample rate is, and uh, um, yeah, that just sends it right out to to your stream or like OBS or whatever it is that you're using for that. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was that when we first took that up, <laughs> I was going, oh yeah, everything's right, but everything was like dead in the middle and um that sort of created a like why is it all in the middle and i'm looking at it i'm looking at it and i and it, it, it took me it took me a minute to figure out oh oh I, it has a slider here this tiny little slider see this this amber slider um which you, you use the computer one and two is the right and left channel so so I, I, the, the left, you move slide to the left, and the right, you slide to the right, and then then you have the right and left channel. Uh, let's see, is there any, I think that's about everything. Um, <laughs> was there something else, just in case I've forgotten. Um, yeah, I, I, I did mention that it sounded really nice, it does sound really nice. It's a really nice sounding thing. And I think there's, um, for me, I'm still, we're still at the state. We haven't got the XLR microphones yet. Um, and I think that's probably a good thing because there's like a little, you know, there's, there's idiosyncrasies with the, all this stuff that, that, that it takes a while to sort of, um, work out. Like if you're, especially if you're not familiar with it. So like, I mean, the, 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 the old hands are probably laughing at me or have been the whole thing or they've already clicked away. Um, but but you know, for for anybody that's newly coming to this this aspect of the you know the the creating hobby, um, in, it, that's that's the thing. It's probably a good thing that we don't have the the XLR microphone so that we can you know iron out the bugs, like, you know, get it on the right uh, USB bus. Something that's I may end up having to buy a separate a USB um, interface card for the computer to hook the that up, just so it has its own bus. So that the I can use the best latency and there won't be any conflicts with other devices on that that bus. So, so there's that, and um, and wow, you know, getting familiar with using using a DAW and stuff like that. That is just another mountain of stuff that is going to be down the road. So, uh, that's where we're at. I uh, I thank you for watching.